We'll see if Volstad decides to kick for territory or run it out of their own end. He looked to have a good foot when he did put ball to boot. He was one of the players that I thought stood out for Duluth. Also, both their both of their props were really good. Their tight head, especially. Lars Anderson. Who said straight off the Klein, straight off the boat from Sweden? <laughs> Van Klein was pretty impressive. The the loose head around the park, maybe not in tight, but around the park. Duluth playing a lot faster than we saw them play yesterday. Of course, this is a rematch of last year's national championship game. Won 32-17 by Salisbury. Before the game started, you could hear the Duluth guys on the field saying, remember what it felt like last year. We don't want to be there again. Been wearing shirts with redemption scrawled across them all weekend. Some impressive face play here. The Sharks are happy to play defense at the moment and not really contest those rucks. Oh, mishandled by the fly half. And Bolstad and Wheeler are getting to it on the ground. Tangled up, yeah. So it's getting a little chippy and referees Mike is not working with his ARs, so he's getting fixed up. This is going to be the type of game, potentially, where you're going to need your ARs to catch. Yeah, there's, we've already seen some off-the-ball stuff, so it's going to be important for the ARs to be able to communicate with the man in the middle. These guys have been ranked number one and number two, Salisbury number one and Duluth number two all year in our Rugby Mag Division two rankings. Cool takes it in. Going to a car already? It looks like it. He, he, he reached in the pocket. And he sends the, sends the, the fly, fly half, half off. And I'm... I missed it. Whatever uh, whatever I, he I did, no, I missed. I no idea, but it was obviously egregious for the referee to go to the card that fast. Trying to hear what Bolstad's saying to his coach explaining what happened and have no idea on that. But that's going to be a big loss for 10 minutes to not have your playmaker Bolstad for Duluth. It'll be interesting to see if Salisbury can capitalize on his absence. Poor line out, but Salisbury is able to clean it up. There's Wheeler. No one man has been able to tackle him on the weekend. Yeah, and three, three penguins went in to take down that shark. Cool, getting cute with the kick. And I think he's, he's going to. I don't I know. Think, I think that, oh, the referees awarded the trial, though. It looked I to me Logan like. Logan Hansen got to it. It looked to me what? like Hansen was there and it touched the ball down. And he's arguing vociferously to the referee, but the call was already made. Interesting that the referee didn't appear to look to use his AR there, although maybe he had already gotten word from him in his ear because they are mic'd up. But so in the span of one minute, Logan Duluth, Hansen's still arguing. Duluth lost their fly half to the sin bin, and it's 5 nothing Salisbury with a chance to make it 7 nothing. Cool three-time Rugby Mag All-American, the MVP of last year's. National Championship game is going to ask some questions, and that time the referee doesn't think Duluth was able to answer it. But Logan Hansen certainly did. Well struck by Cool, and it's seven nothing. So he's got a try, converts his own try, and the Seagull Sharks are up. Seven zip. Good 
Duluth has an impressively large cheering section that's traveled down here from Minnesota. With cowbells. Oh boy. Wheeler Salisbury, again making Salisbury's defense coming up so fast off the fringe. That's the reserve fly half or the wing who slid over to fly half for the Fighting Penguins. Sam Torvenen. Referee's coming back to a knock on by Salisbury. UMD. So Wheeler has clearly made his mark in the early going. He's gonna be all over the Salisbury ball carriers in the backfield. Surely he wears number 19 because the seven jersey is too small. He's pretty big for a seven, but he plays really well. There he is again. Yep, another tackle by Wheeler. Van Klein with the carry, able to get four or five meters. The Penguins can keep this quick pick and jam. It's really gonna test Salisbury's ability to recycle quickly enough. There's Hansen and Torvenen. Interesting pop Not kick sure from the hooker Blake there. Martin. That was a I don't think Coach Jeremy Kachu was gonna be happy with that decision. Giving the ball right back to Salisbury. Yeah, that tactically was probably not the best choice there. 22 meters out, having had multiple phase play, possessing well, and then you have your hooker kicked away, although they've retained it in the line out. Hansen tried to feed it inside to Jake Luger's the number eight and did not find his hands, but somehow they hold on to the ball. Duluth is gonna have to be patient, I mean, the style of play they play against Salisbury is going to work, but they have to be patient with it. It's not going to work as fast as it does against some other teams. Yeah, they're going to need to score after 10, 12 phases of offense, whereas Salisbury is content to have about two phases and a try. Ooh, Martin runs straight into Wheeler. There's Van Klein with another big carry. Wheeler He's just made th Wheeler just made three consecutive tackles on three consecutive carries. And Duluth is knocking on the door. This is a really oh, physical nice game. Oh, nice drive by Great Blake drive Martin. by Martin. Duluth is two meters out. Big prop has the ball. So the two times that Salisbury or that Duluth has tried to get the ball to their big playmaker, Jake Lugers, they've not been able to do it. That time it was Lugers' fault. Pass went straight through his hands, ending a, what had been a very serious threat. But Duluth will have the line out. We saw them struggle in the line out yesterday. I'm not sure how they got awarded that line out. Did Salisbury actually touch Salisbury it? Salisbury kicked the ball out of bounds. Oh, okay. A huge oh, hit. Wow. Was that huge hit from Wheeler? He wrapped. Apparently, the ref thought it was a bit high, Not but it looked it was vicious. But it looked clean to me. I think the yep, the referee does say high. But wow, Wheeler has been absolutely everywhere. Now this is an interesting. Duluth is one to try. This is an easy makeable penalty. Their kicker Bolstad's not on the field. Oh, you wonder if that another huge hit. Salisbury is just playing ferocious defense. And the referee quickly deems that ball unplayable as the bodies are all over the deck. If this game ends up being as close as it looks, it's gonna be not having Volstead there to slot the kick or anybody else on the field, you feel comfortable taking the kick. And that penalty that you had might end up being pretty important. So we're about 12 minutes in, Pat, and I think Scotty Wheeler has about 12 tackles to his credit. Fantastic work rate. He's a moose of a player. Got a 
Gotta move that ball. And a knock on advantage they're playing here to Duluth. And again, we've seen Duluth go into that pattern where they're content to just pluck away. Well, they've been missing their connecting piece in Bolstad, but they get it out. And Lugers likes to camp out in the back line. They do that intentionally and deliberately and an awful lot. They want to get him matched up against some smaller tacklers. I'm not sure there are any smaller tacklers on Salisbury, though. <laughs> and is that Wheeler again? No, that was actually locked Dylan Burke. Salisbury's defense has been absolutely ferocious so far. And there's Van Klein making a big hit. I expect we're going to see this game get very chippy based on how hard these players are hitting each other. That pass was forward. Referee sees it. That's a big mistake. It really, without any pressure from the defense, they've turned the ball over and they're going to give Duluth the ball on the 22 meter line roundabout. And this is where Duluth made their mark yesterday against Whitewater was scrums, attacking scrums. They showed some good movement in, off the set pieces when they weren't just walking the ball into the try zone, although without Bolstat, you wonder if they're gonna be able to do the same thing here. moving. Wing Leland McMillan with a nice run. Penalty, I think it's on Wheeler for not getting away from the ruck. Uh, looks like he's got referee signaling hands in maybe. And again, without a kicker on the field, Duluth just electing to run the ball. Their line out we saw yesterday is pretty poor and they're not very inventive in ways to make it work. They went. And I think Luger may have gone over for the try. No, it wasn't him. It, it was Derek Van Klein. It was Van Klein. We saw a lot from him yesterday. He's a heck of a player, Rugby Mag Division II All American. They don't need no stinking line outs or no penalties. They're just going to run the ball down your throat. That's how you're tired of tackling them. Which is really the type of game that Salisbury probably relishes defensively. Run right at them, they'll stick you. Cody Christensen nails the conversion. So we're tied up 7-7 with about 17 minutes gone. And ball stats back on the field. So Duluth was able to put seven points on the board while they were a man down, and an important man down at that. just leveled Martin and I don't know if he's gonna be pop he, he pops right back up the little guy and there's Luger huge run it's gonna take three guys to bring him down Salisbury's on the back foot
Klein takes it weak. Klein is He's a strong runner. Dragon guys with him. Not really built like a prop, but he runs hard. And oh, that's going to be, hit I think we Burnett. may see a red card on Burnett. That was ridiculously late, ridiculously cheap. Blake Martin is standing up to the challenge, though. That guy has taken some serious yellow punishment. Card, yellow card from Bur for Burnett, and he's lucky to have gotten away with just a yellow. Referee has to have his mic fixed again. I'm impressed with Martin's resilience. He got absolutely plastered by Scotty Wheeler on that restart. Gets back up a couple seconds later, gets a cheap shot from Burnett, and he's up and at him, and he's, he's not a big guy, but he's a tough one. I've watched a few Division II finals live over the last few years, and generally Salisbury is always involved, but one thing that they provide that maybe you don't see at the Division I-A or Division I AA level is some of this physicality. I mean, certainly there's there are some big hits from BYU, from Utah, some of those teams. And it looks like well, the referee had his back turned. There was an off the ball skirmish. And this is going to be difficult for the referee to get control of this game. He's going to go talk to his AR on the opposite side of the field. There may have been some punches thrown. It looked like Luke DeRocher may have put boot to somebody's face. He, he was, seemed to be clawing at the ground. Was, I'm not exactly sure there was a body underneath it from this vantage point. So the referee is going to have his work cut out for him to get control of this game. He's already issued two yellow cards. He's calling the captains together. Time wasn't on for that line out, which is why the ref is going to have us redo it. 75% chance Duluth loses their own line out here, based on yesterday's statistics anyway. Hey, they well, went they up and got one. one. Kind of. They may have. They did lose it, and there's Wheeler running really hard. Cool gives a little show and go. But I'll tell you, as physical as Salisbury is, Pat Duluth seems to be happy to take it right back at him. Salisbury is a pretty intimidating team. I mean, they they wear the shaved heads, they have the beards. I don't think that's not by design. But Duluth is not, <laughs> they're not intimidated one bit. They've got the Mohawks to match the shave heads. So with the hooker Burnett in the bin, Salisbury's had to make some changes in their front row. Duluth wins that scrum easily. Oh, and that looked like a high tackle, but referee's gonna let that go. And it was again Wheeler. He at, he makes every tackle for Salisbury. Actually, let me take that back. It was cool. Ball spilled forward, and Salisbury's gonna get the scrum. A scrum cap switch for Leland McMillan. Might have had the wrong one on to begin with. 
getting word that he had left his lucky scrum cap at the hotel. <laughs> Someone had to run back and get it. Now he's got the proper headgear on, so we should expect to see a bunch of tries from McMillan now. And maybe Chris Kunkels. I know he lost his yesterday. Maybe it's been found. There's Cool going to his boot. First time we've seen that. Where he's trying to pin him deep. Just as you said, that lucky scrum cap. Didn't help his passing ability, but he was able to make a nice run. Well, they are now heading back to the hotel to get his lucky mitts. <laughs> then he'll be complete. Both teams' reserves running around trying to keep warm as it's about 40 degrees here. They put Wheeler in at Hooker in Burnett's absence. Good strike from the flanker turned Hooker. Luke DeRocher is a small guy. He's the blindside flanker for Duluth, but he packs a punch. And Cool just wrong-footed about three Duluth defenders. Nick Capobianco couldn't hold on to that ball. Looked like it went off his foot though. Knock on from Duluth. They're gonna give the ball here to Salisbury in the scrum. I think there's about just under 20 minutes remaining in the half. Been a lot of stoppages of play for the referee to deal with foul play and other issues, so. Not quite sure we can go by the stadium clock. It was Rodriguez who we saw some good breakaway speed from yesterday, but he knocks the ball on in, in contact there. It's cold, you can see the player's breath. I don't know what the temperature is, but it certainly dropped from earlier in the day. not affecting people's ability to catch the ball. Well, we certainly saw a lot of ball handling errors in the first match of the day, so it wouldn't surprise me to see it here as well. Strong scrum from Duluth. We saw Duluth do that yesterday where they run a play off the scrum where all they do is insert McMillan coming on a line off the feed from the scrum half. Didn't work out there. His he lost the ball forward in contact. Not sure I'd want to send a solo runner straight into three or this four of the these Salisbury of defense. defense. And maybe not the skinny one either. He does have the special scrum cap though. And there's the Duluth wow, scrum great drive we saw over yesterday, scrum from huge. Bolstad takes a stab. That might be a big turnover. It looks like it's energized the Penguins a little bit. Their scrum half is down, slow to get to his feet, but they're still going. Duluth doesn't need a scrum half. Yeah, they really probably would be better off without one, frankly. <laughs> Oh, that one was kicked out. A rucker came in and accidentally knocked the ball forward with his foot. But Duluth was able to maintain possession. 
that was the most one egregious of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. How is nobody calling that? The referee doesn't even appear to be playing advantage. Nick Cavabianco is caught on to the fact was, that the ref is not paying attention to offside. He was literally 15 meters offside. While the inside center was calling for him to be called offside. Remarkable. That, that was really astonishing. Even Wheeler slipped off Van Klein that time. I guess if you're not cheating, you're not trying. I mean, this is a big penalty here for Duluth. Capo Bianco might as well have lined up in the first receiver position <laughs> was, there. He was so offsides. That was pretty phenomenal. Duluth is going to opt for the scrum, which I think is a smart decision instead of tapping and running at Salisbury. They've been able to move the ball. They just had a very powerful scrum a minute ago. And I think they might be able to drive them right over. We'll see. They were able to do that to Whitewater a number of times. Salisbury short their hooker still. So Wheeler's in, stuck at hooker, and they're going to bring in Ethan Reese, their outside center, to play flanker on the blind side. That's a smart move by Salisbury there to try to match in the pack as well as they can. It may not make a difference given how strong Duluth is in the scrum. Well, they've won the ball. Let's see if they can and drive. Here comes, here starts the drive. Very the deliberate. Drive. They kick the ball into the scrum. They need to keep control of that ball. And the referee slipped down and awards a try. So a walkover try for the Duluth scrum. Phenomenal. That scrum is really, really impressive. To do that to a team that's as physically strong as Salisbury is just something that you wouldn't expect. And that's really got to give Duluth a, a leg up psychologically here in a game where physicality is hugely important. Burnett doing jumping jacks on the sideline to keep warm. Not quite sure how much longer he has in the bin. Nice strike by Bullstab, but it's wide. So it's going to be 12-7 still, separated by just a single try. And Burnett's back on the field. Now let's see how Salisbury responds. Not often that they get beat physically like that with Duluth pushing them back into the try zone. Now Dylan Burke threw a punch in the ruck there for Salisbury. Referee didn't see it. The Duluth fans certainly did. <laughs> Big counter run. The Sharks commit an awful lot of bodies, but it works. Good job by Cool to get some dirty ball, field it cleanly. Nice run by Ethan Reese here. There's Wheeler with well, the ball. Well, that's a collision. Lukers and Wheeler. Rodriguez now with the ball. Salisbury has all of their forwards into this breakdown. I'm super impressed with Scotty Wheeler's work rate. As intense as he does everything, he's able to do things over and over and over again. His fitness is phenomenal. Well, it has been for 30 minutes. We'll see if it can, he can do it for another 50. And considering he's making probably 50% of Salisbury's tackles themselves, they're gonna, they're gonna need him to do it for the next 50 minutes. The 
rain has started to come down here at Furman. Salisbury likes that little fake loop where they give the cool to Capbianco and then Capbianco takes it back inside. It's a nice kick from Cool. He's not able to find touch. Hanson chips ahead and makes a tackle. Very impressive tackle there by Hanson. But there's a penalty on Duluth. I think that's on Hanson as well. He didn't get away from the breakdown as fast as he needed to. Expect to see Cool boom this downfield and try to give Salisbury an attacking line out deep in Duluth territory. Good kick, better than we saw from him yesterday. Gonna put the Sharks just outside the attacking 22. Eight minutes on the clock, 12 to seven in favor of Duluth. Furman Police is here. I think they're here to investigate Capo Bianco's offsides. Well, they'll have be questioning both of us as witnesses, no doubt. Maybe they'll ask to see the film. The scrum is gonna be right in front of Salisbury's sideline. It's gonna be a Duluth put in in front of Salisbury's sideline, so this is gonna be the power of Duluth scrum and the craziness of Salisbury's fans. Which are pretty equivalent. They're both impressive in their own right. Good scrum from Duluth. Inside switch to Logan Hansen. We haven't seen Bolstad do much running himself, and he's a pretty good stepper. It, clearly, Duluth uses him as more of a d director. He runs their offense, he distributes. And once again, there's Wheeler making a huge tackle. Box kick from the scrum half for Duluth. It's going to be a good counterattacking oh, opportunity knock. for Salisbury, except that Ross forward. Can Duluth walk this try all the way in? Well, it's 40 meters, so I'd probably put the probability down at about 20% chance. <laughs> Some serious depth in the uh, Duluth back line right now. They're all lined up very tight. Yeah, their outside They're man. Very deep. Their outside man is about 50 meters behind where the put-in at this scrum is. Tackle by who else? Scotty Wheeler. A rare kick from Bolstad. Decent chase. Is that Blake Ball Martin with the chip ahead? Three, it was. It looks like it's going to be a Duluth line out. It is. Much to their dismay. Duluth. Attacking one five meters out. They'd probably be well 
serve to just throw this in not straight and hope Salisbury elects for a scrum. <laughs> they did win their last line now. They put up. They actually have won a couple today, and they win this one too. It looked like they had wanted to set them all, but the jumper wasn't on the same page as everyone else. There goes Martin. Bolstad, nice offload there. Fantastic offload. He split two defenders, got, got the ball beyond the defenders' bodies, flicked it to McMillan with his lucky try, scoring scrum cap, and he dots it down. So MVP of the game for Duluth is whoever ran back to the hotel and got the scrum cap for McMillan so far. All of a sudden, Duluth is going to be up by a couple scores here. Yeah, Salisbury finding themselves in a position that they are certainly not used to. They were down yesterday to Madison 10 0 and then stormed back relatively quickly. They're about to go down by. They're down by five, 10. could be. Yeah, they're down 10, could be 12, depending on this conversion. Miss hit by Bolstadt, so it's 17-7, Duluth. Two minutes to play in the half, and Salisbury's gonna look to strike back quickly. Interesting little restart there from Cool. It, it works, they get the possession back. He just chipped it ahead and went and got it himself. Good boot by Cool. Pinning Duluth back. Now we're gonna get in a kicking battle. Salisbury doesn't mind that at all. John Cavalbianco puts this one through. Oh, I don't know if, I wonder if McMillan brought that in. That's what Salisbury's arguing, but the referee says the ball had gone into the try zone before McMillan played it. It's gonna be a 22 dropout to Duluth under a minute remains in this half. Very exciting first half of action, Pat. It has been. Lots of big hits, nice runs. A drive over scrum. As it gets wetter, that field is gonna become slipperier and slipperier. We just saw two players fall down. And first it rain, was cool, now it's Lukers. Yeah, the rain's coming down a lot harder now. Thankfully, we're in a luxury box here at John S. Roberts Stadium on the campus of Furman University in Greenville, <laughs> South Carolina. There's nice Luger. Run by Lugers. We're almost at time for the half. Duluth, another slip as the ball carrier tries to take it off the fringe. Well done by Bolstad to maintain possession and get close to that game line. Big hit by Cap Bianco. That's <laughs> that's definitely a knock from Salisbury and quite possibly an intentional knock, but we're not gonna play it as such. Poor pass. Poor pass gives Salisbury an attacking up. lineup. Yeah, that's going to be the half. Okay. 17 7, exciting first half. We'll be back for the final half of action in this D2 National Championship game.
And here we are back for the start of the second half. Duluth leads Salisbury 17 to seven. And I want to apologize. I had been calling number 14 for Duluth Lee McMillan when it is actually Sam, Sam Torvenin. Um, Duluth gets an F for roster completion as they gave us a roster that identified Lee McMillan as number 14. But Torvenin, who's the one who's had the breakout game for the Penguins with the lucky scrum cap. I have confirmed that it is McMillan's lucky scrum cap that Torvenin is wearing now. <laughs> Good take by Logan Hansen on that restart. Logan Hansen's had a good game. Knock on from the Penguins. Good platform for Salisbury, Salisbury to attack from here. Yeah, and this would be big for Salisbury after they were on the back foot for most of the end of that first half if they could start this second stanza with a try. Salisbury attacking into a driving rain. Calvianco switches to Reese. Looks like Duluth may have turned it over. No, Salisbury retains. Knocked by, knocked by Salisbury. Pat, interesting one thing I've noticed about Salisbury's offense and Cool in particular is that he almost always takes the ball standing still. And you'd think um, if he could take the ball with some forward momentum that he would be an even more dangerous attacker. But I don't know if it's intentionally the way Salisbury wants to play or just he doesn't isn't perfectly in sync with his nine. But Almost always, he's taken the ball at a standstill. Well, I think they want to see the ball move through his hands if it doesn't go straight to his boot. His, his centers outside of him are, have been lining up extremely deep, especially off the set piece. Duluth kicked away an advantage there for offsides by the Salisbury Hey, Scrum a break half. by Capobianco. Yep, the other Capobianco. So Salisbury's come out revitalized. Cool with up and under. Great up and under. Goes and makes a tackle himself. I, I think some of the Duluth players look like they thought that their fullback had called Mark there. The referee obviously did not think so. Nor did Cool as he steamrolled the fullback. Great Rodriguez. break by Rodriguez. We saw that from him a little bit yesterday. Let's see what Salisbury's tactic is here in tight. I'm gonna punch it up at least once. Big, Big counter, counter rock. rock. That's that was that was won by Andy Godey in there, the number five for for Duluth. He did a good and job of pressuring fight. that ball. They've got a fight on the ground between Godey and. Looks like it's Bolstad actually, it looks and like Wheeler. Bolstad and Wheeler. Yep. Now they shake each other's hands and get up, and Salisbury continues to attack. But again, we got off the ball stuff and the, the AR got that one. So it's gonna be interesting to see what the AR tells the referee. I, I frankly couldn't see who was the instigator in that one. All I saw was Bolstad and Wheeler on the ground. Well, depending where they bring the penalty back to, if they bring it back to where that fight was and it's awarded to Salisbury, they're gonna have a great opportunity at goal, which if they convert it could put them Within seven. Well, a lot of presumption in that statement. I don't if, know. If the referee saw, if the AR saw foul play against Bolstad, remember, he already got yellow carded in the first two minutes of this game. So it looks like he's going to bring Cool and it looks like it's going to be Wheeler who's been pinged. Well, no cards. Still have no idea what the heck we're going to do. Looks like it'll be a penalty on Salisbury. Duluth's gonna have the option. And you'd think conventional wisdom says 
This should kick for territory. So it looks like the AR caught something off the ball on Wheeler. Referee gives him a talking to. Volstadt kicks the ball up into our luxury box. I knock it on, and it's going to be a scrum to Duluth here in the parking lot. Does that mean you're playing for Salisbury? Scrum to Salisbury. Are you a seagull or whatever it is, Duluth? Is. Great run by the Duluth Penguins. There's Martin. Gets hit hard by the Salisbury Wheeler. wing. Wheeler's Wheeler ready to get back in Volstad's face again. I tell you, it's fun watching two teams who play this physical. Uh-oh, and I think Wheeler's gonna go to the bend. I have no idea what for. Certainly it's not the tackle. That was a perfectly fine tackle he just made on Volstad. And that's really gonna hurt Salisbury as Wheeler has been their every man defensively. I can't help but think that that was some, something on Wheeler and compounded the earlier infringement that happened moments ago on the other end of the field and the referee had just had enough. So, 10 minute break wow. for Wheeler and Duluth. Not straight though. The woes for the Duluth line out have returned. To be fair, that's the first, that's the first poor line out I've seen from Duluth today. And really, at the end of the day, Salisbury elects for the scrum and in some ways, Duluth will be happy to try to take this one against the head. With the Salisbury pack for the second time today, down a man. Wow, good pressure from the Duluth scrum half. Huge kick Cody by Cool. Penning Duluth very deep, mishandled by Torvenen in McMillan's scrum cap. You know, interesting, Pat, you made the comment earlier that we hadn't seen Boltstadt run ball in hand very much, and since that time, he's had a couple of probing runs. It's like Blake Martin knocked that one on. One of the few mistakes that the Duluth hooker has made today. He's had an excellent game, heart and soul of that Duluth forward pack. Let's see if Salisbury can channel the ball back to their number eight and get it out of there quickly before Duluth either wheels it or drives it over. And if we thought if we thought Duluth's backs had lined up deep, check out Salisbury's backs here. Deep and narrow. And the scrum may have been wheeled. It was. That's the second consecutive wheel that Duluth's gotten. This one Salisbury wouldn't even get the ball out of. And you can't help but think that part of the reason is that they're missing a flanker there with Wheeler on the sideline in the bin. Not able to stabilize that scrum. Salisbury's players looking to their coaches to see how they can correct that. Easily won scrum by Duluth. They take it weak side. There's McMillan, sans scrum cap. But he puts it directly into touch. Salisbury going with a three man line out. Win it clean? Oh, nope, no. No, Martin took it away. Well done. Van Klein with a little bit of room to run. He's a heavy ball carrier. Off to DeRocher. 
Oh, and there's the big man, Luger. Uh, Jake Luger's carrying guys. A lot of Salisbury players offsides here. I don't know if the referee's got that. Salisbury trying to drag Duluth out of bounds, and they do. Love well, Duluth to switch the field position for the first time in some time. But they do not have the ball. So we've got a Salisbury player. Looks like he broke his nose. Their coach is just going to reset that nose for him. And he is a doc, Dr. Bob Davis. You never really know when someone's nickname is Doc if they're actually a doctor. But I think Davis is. Well, there's Doc Jones at Cutstown. He's a doctor of chiropractic. Another short line out from Salisbury. Win it. But not straight which is gonna give Duluth a cherished scrum from about 10 meters out. Now this one they legitimately could walk in, Pat. Especially with Wheeler out. You gotta suspect Salisbury's gonna bring a, a flank or a back into their scrum, although it doesn't look like it. Last time they brought their 13 into the flank position. This time they're gonna to opt to go with only seven men against that powerful Duluth scrum. And Duluth is driving it. They're moving it. Looks like they're going to bail out on it, though. And it's going to be a, they got an offsides because the scrum half for Salisbury I will, from an offsides position. Bolstad's going to take it quick. Nobody's back 10 for Salisbury. Burnett. Burnett makes a tackle high and without being back 10. He's got to watch it because he's got a yellow card to his name. Not sure how Blake Martin dished that ball inside, but he did. They Klein with the carry. They're just inches from the try line here. Another it, penalty. No, it's another penalty. Duluth, Duluth fans think they were awarded a try, but it's a penalty, which very well may just become a try if Duluth marches this scrum into maybe, the try zone. Maybe they know better. Maybe they know that the try is already a foregone conclusion. Well, it was yesterday when the second half came around and Duluth had a scrum anywhere near the try line against Whitewater, so... We saw them walk one in already today. Let's see if they can walk another one in. And you hear the Duluth fans saying, walk it in, boys. Big ask of Garrett Roden and Alex Chavez, the props for Salisbury here. And there we go. They're inching their way in. Collapses. Although ball penalty. Pulled down. I'm surprised he didn't just give it. Oh, he is. He's, he's going to give it. He's going to award a penalty try. try. I don't and blame I, him. I think it's, there's no other choice. You pull a scrum down as it's being walked in. That's a penalty try. And frankly, Salisbury would have been better off letting that try be walked in where it was because now there's going to be a conversion right underneath the post as opposed to out wide. What a scrum. Yeah, I think the story this weekend really has been Duluth scrum. Front row of Derek Van Klein, Blake Martin, Lars Anderson. Second row of Andrew Buntrock and Andy Godin. Have been really impressive tight five. Buntrock especially has been really powerful. Thank you. 
All right, so it's 24-7. So the Penguins, this one's in danger of, you know, you and me chatting before off off the air. I said, if this one gets out of hand, I think it's going to be in Salisbury's favor. I didn't, I didn't think Duluth had enough to really put that much separation between them and Salisbury. I, I thought they had a chance to win, but wouldn't be a, a big one. And here comes Luger. They're proving me wrong. Nifty footwork from Austin. the outside center. Austin wow. Hersher. He stepped a couple Salisbury defenders, and everything's going right for Duluth. Oh, Van Klein in space. He's a Mack truck. I think we're seeing just how important Scotty Wheeler is to that Salisbury team. No one's coming up and making those big hits. They're breaking the game line every time Duluth is. Salisbury is able to drag the ball carry out of bounds, though, so it's going to be a line out to Salisbury. Which will inevitably be not straight and result in a Penguin scrum. There can't be too much time left on the He's taking a sweat off. It looks like Wheeler's Wheeler. going to come back on soon. Well, Wheeler was fit as it is. Give him 10 minutes of rest and... He should be really impressive the last Why 26 minutes. Why not one by the Penguins? They're going to need him to be, yep. Lukers. It's a nice inside pass there from Klein to Lukers. And Bolstad's going to take it himself. Oh. Miscommunication there. He always half passes to no one. Pass to no one from Cody Christensen. That was a pretty important mistake. They lost a good 10 or 15 meters from that. And Lukers with a nice run again. Good rock by, by Duluth to secure possession there. And they might have gone in. over. No. Penalty. You got someone on Duluth for, oh, they got crossing on Duluth and they're gonna take it quick. Cool's gonna go to the boot. Knocked forward. Good job of Cool testing the Duluth fullback. Yeah, you gotta expect you're gonna see some urgency out of Cool here in the next five to 10 minutes. Wheeler's back on, you're gonna certainly see some urgency out of him. I expect we're going to see Cool, if Salisbury wins this scrum, we're going to see Cool boot the ball downfield and try to make Duluth play out of their own end. Boot by Cool. It was confirmed from the Salisbury sideline that Coach Bob Davis is, in fact, a doctor, which we thought was the case, and I believe said. Query where he finds time to coach rugby. Nice mall here. Good from mall Salisbury. from Salisbury, yeah. It, it clearly, it looked like Blake Martin was offside, but yeah, he's got advantage. There's going to be a penalty here offside on Blake Martin in the mall. They're going to take it quick. Cool's cool. going to go quick. Oh, wow, he slips through. Good offload. E Ethan Reese. Salisbury's knocking on the door.
They're attacking right on the posts and good, strong defense. Duluth's gonna be penalized and it looks like the referee's gonna call someone over. To find them, I'm going as quick as I can. And he's just carded. It's Derek Van Klein. It is. The fantastic prop for Duluth is off the field. So that's the fourth card of the game. Yesterday, Burnett was pretty nails in this short yardage scenario. That's who they go to. He actually seemed to slow up before contact there. Not sure if that was designed in order to set second phase, but they didn't go very quick. Sometimes you gotta adjust your body coming from a big man's perspective. Salisbury's inches away here. Oh, huge Great defense blitz from defense. McMillan. The real McMillan. Causes, Salisbury managed to skip over. Causes a knock on. It might have been in. Wow, that's a hugely wasted opportunity for Salisbury if Duluth is able to win this scrum and clear their end. Although interesting to see how the, looks like they've moved Luger to prop. Kind of looks like a prop. With, well, yeah. Their scrum's probably not gonna miss a beat. Duluth elects to run it out of their own end. A little bit surprising there that we didn't see Bolstat put his foot to the ball. It's kind of been their MO. Wow, yeah, what look a at run that run by Torvin. There we go. It's uh, in the middle of the field. McMillan's chasing. I think McMillan was offsides there. He's playing the ball on the ground, too. Referee's not going to bother with it, suppose it looked like. There's Bolstad. The Rodriguez was there and able to prevent the offload. Kind of a panicked move there from Salisbury's wing. Kicked it out. Duluth tried to go quick on that line out, but referee had already set the line. So they're about six meters out here. They score here with the man down. Gonna be awful tough for Salisbury to overcome that. Well, especially given, and how has Duluth's lineout improved that much overnight? They have really gotten. I think they've so committed to better. putting somebody up. Actually, great run. I think he might have scored. He That's did. Austin Ursher. We've seen him be the guy off of a lot of set pieces today, cutting back against the grain, running on an angle. He did a great job there, hopping over a shark body on the ground and squirting into the try zone. So how demoralizing is that for Salisbury, Pat, that they were two meters out knocking on the door, a man up, and then two minutes later, suddenly Duluth has gone in under the post. It's a massive swing. Um, I mean, you look at the score, it's 29 to seven, which would indicate that it's not been close, but this has gotta be the closest 29 to seven game I've can remember seeing. Yeah, it really has been. The score line is not reflective of how tight this game has been played. Duluth has just made the most of all their opportunities in Salisbury, as we saw down there at the other end of the field, unable to take advantage of theirs. So 18 minutes left. That's what stands between Duluth and redemption. Duluth fighting for its first national championship in the program's history. Whereas Salisbury is down but not out in the hunt for their fifth. Oh, well, he's got a 24 point. Graham Harriman doing a great job as the most high profile water boy in a Division II game. 
24 point deficit with 18 minutes left. The skies are opening up, much to the delight of the Duluth fans. Penguins like water. And soon to be ice. Oh, huge hit by, I would suspect, Wheeler. I couldn't see a number. That was a, was a Salisbury reserve who'd just come on. Those 10 minutes that Salisbury played, I know we've said Scotty Wheeler's name a lot, and I don't want to put too much emphasis on him, but I feel like those 10 minutes he was off the field, you kind of saw the wind come out of Salisbury's sails, and it was a costly 10 minutes. It's true, no doubt about it. Duluth content to slow the game down now. Salisbury scrum, opportunity for them to attack. Duluth still down a man, is Van Klein still sitting on the sideline? I think we'll see Cool and Capabianco look to take the game into their own hands at this point. Good pressure from Christian to the scrum, but I think might Referee's have been a little too much. Sides. Yep. So Salisbury's gonna go quick. Cool is quick to the mark, and he's gonna go up and over the defense here. Good take from Duluth. Big hit from Luger. AR says the ball is brought out by Duluth, Salisbury line out. The clock is ticking, 15 minutes remain. 31 to seven in favor of Minnesota Duluth. Good line out from Salisbury. It's gotta be soon. They're gonna manage to punch one in, they need it. Sooner rather than later, for sure. Cool with another up and under. I don't blame him. Salisbury's had trouble breaking the loose line with much other than something creative coming from Cool. So while the last couple of kicks have not worked out, I certainly understand why they're doing it. Substitution made. The big lock. I believe that's Andrew Buntrock coming out. Buntrock's out. Huge weekend for him. Buntrock, one of the stars of that Duluth scrum. Big tackle from Duluth open side. We got advantage played here. Duluth offside, so Salisbury's gonna have another chance. And once again, you see Cool go quick. Man, he is so fast to get to that mark on the penalty. And I seriously think a Duluth player just tackled another Duluth player. Big boot from Volstad. Players going down all over. The field conditions are getting worse as the rain's coming down. Salisbury continuing to kick it, and Duluth is handling it very well. There's Hersher again. He's out of bounds, though. You can see the concerned looks on the Salisbury players' faces. They know that the clock is ticking and there is not much time if they want to make this epic comeback. It's illegal. Capabianco. 
Good stick from Lukers. On Wheeler. Pretty physical matchup between those two. That looked like Martin. Martin I has think had the a heck of a game. Penguins are going to steal this one. No, they're going to get penalized. Diving over at the breakdown. So Cool's going to bomb this down the field. Salisbury electing to still go with that three-man line out. Wheeler setting up in the receiver position. They keep faking that ball off the top. I'm not sure that that's legal. Uh, Logan Hansen coming up with a big tackle there on Cool. Salisbury had an, a set piece. A good attacking opportunity ended up losing about 20, 25 meters off of it because of slow ball coming out and good defense from Logan Hansen. Now the Salisbury's backs have got some space to run. Ball stat, good defense from the Duluth fly half. Salisbury moving the ball. It's Matthew Lasser, the substitute wing, number 21. Made they got Wheeler out in the back line. I think they're going to want to try and hit him up. Cool sees it. Put a knock on and. Whoa. Not no advantage sure. there. Oh, I guess he said there was a second knock. So off the first knock by the Salisbury strike runner. Thomas DiMatteoru with the knock on. Duluth will be happy to just take this scrum. And has Van Klein been back, brought back on the field? He has. So 10 minutes remain. And with each passing minute, I think the chances of Salisbury repeating are becoming increasingly slimmer. Be interesting to see how the scrum for Duluth is without Bunt Rock in. They want it. Full set to Hanson. Strong runner, but he loses the ball as he's going down. Duluth's going to go into a pick and go mode. Just killing clock here with a 24 point lead. Salisbury's going to have to start counter rucking. Great oh, cut by Bolstad. He's going to go his own. He doesn't have the support he wants. Not just yet. He tries to offload it to Blake Martin. And Great job by Martin even to get there in support. Working very hard off the ball. There's Van Klein, punishing tacklers as usual. Sal Knock up from Salisbury, gives Duluth a, another attacking scrum. see some kind of 
misdirection backline movement off this scrum, I suspect. Uh, this handle from Bolstad. It was a poor out pass. And Salisbury's got the ball back. Bolstad's been impressive this game. Really thought you know, he was sin bend early, but he's showed good composure and running the offense for Salzburg Duluth. Duluth's gonna bring on a couple fresh legs for this last seven minutes. Duluth looks to have wheeled the scrum, although I don't see. Yep, now finally the referee gives the signal. Doesn't really matter who they keep putting in there. I mean, they've made a number of substitutions. Duluth is literally running out five new players. Emptying the bench. I think they got this one in hand, and I, I gotta agree with them. Coming off to a big ovation, or group of guys that have got Salisbury down 31 to 7. 24 Under points in six and a half minutes is a tall order. Not sure what the referee's calling there. He's going to reset the scrum. Hanson again. Man, fearless runner going into the Salisbury backline tacklers like that. Salisbury or Duluth reserve forwards crashing the ball in, and there's Van Klein. Gets met hard by Salisbury rush defense. Continuity has not gone anywhere. Duluth, even with all the subs they've got on the field, they're still managing to, to win their scrums and move the ball forward. Yeah, well, the one consistent piece there is Martin, the hooker. He's the heart and soul of that forward pack, and he's still out there making sure everybody's on the same page. He's absorbed everything that Salisbury has thrown at him. He's been battered around a little bit, but responded fantastically well. Salisbury, High work rate. Salisbury gets called for in from the side and it looks like Duluth's going to try to put some more points on the board. Give Bolstadt an opportunity to kick at posts. And more importantly, waste some, some more time. time. Exactly. Roll off that clock. Four minutes from the promised land. You can sense it in the Duluth fans who are seated just in front of us. They're feeling it. Campus police has asked that nobody rush the field. We'll see if the Duluth fans comply. They look to have brought about two, three hundred spectators with them. 
don't know what that one's doing with the gas can and the rag by the car, but it's not my business, I guess. Penalty kick was missed, so 22 dropout for Salisbury. Duluth is likely going to go back into ball control mode. This little punch up from Tony Wilson, one of those reserves. And there's Martin directing traffic at the back of the rock. I'll tell you, Cody Christensen has to be one of the hardest working nines I've seen because he plays, you know, Duluth doesn't go wide all that often. Well, he, probably, so he essentially winds up as the ninth forward. He probably rucks as much as any scrum half in the country. Yep. Although he also gets rewarded with a lot of tries where he just has to touch the ball after the scrum has walked it into the try zone. Absolutely right. He had two of those yesterday, one of them today. And Duluth really just content to just keep it in tight. Although, as I say that, they go out to Bolstat. Here's some width, Logan. There's not McMillan and not with the scrum cap. That was I wasn't. Tornanen. Oh, it was McMillan. It was McMillan. It was McMillan. The knock on an un unadvised shovel pass from Duluth forward. <laughs> Duluth fans love their scrums. It's almost like all the other stuff is what happens between the fun times. Again? Oh, and that's why they love them. They just wheeled that one. That's a pretty nice punctuation on this weekend for Minnesota Duluth. Can't help but to be extremely impressed. What a fantastic job Coach Jeremy Kachuba has done with, with his scrum. They do have some size. I mean, don't get me wrong, their second row is large. Uh, Derek Van Klein is a big unit, not prop built, uh, was actually a flanker last year, but just some strong individuals and just fantastic form. Yeah, look how low they get at the, at the start of the scrum. I mean, the heaviest guy in their entire pack is their number eight. And of course, just as we say that, they get penalized in the scrum. But less than a minute on the game clock here at the stadium. And even in a loss, you, this has been a heck of a run for Salisbury Sharks. And their 10th Final Four appearance. Um, they're without a doubt the most decorated, most impressive, most consistent Division II college program in the country. Yeah, hands down. Coach Dr. Bob Davis and Bill Kreese do a great job. And I know that they're going to walk home defeated and deflated, but they've had a hell of a season. And seniors like Nick Cool and Nick Capobianco have nothing but, should have nothing but pride after a great season. And that's it. Ballstaff kicks it to touch, and it's going to be happy feet in Duluth, Minnesota, as the Fighting <laughs> Penguins are the 2013 Division II Men's Collegiate National Champions. Well done, Duluth. They got their redemption, which they've been seeking since last year. Well fought game, well earned. 31 7 is the final. We're gonna sign off and make sure no one's lit our car on fire. Thanks for joining us for the uh, for the webcast.